please welcome uh, Chris Varvash and his story, Welcome to America. As a kid, I always wanted to go to America. I didn't really know too much about it other than what I learned in school, though. I never visited for a vacation. I didn't have friends here or that distant American uncle either. But I always loved movies. The cool locations, the skyscrapers, the car chases with those huge American cars was something that any kid would want to experience. Of course, I knew it wouldn't be like in the movies, but I always found the so-called American dream fascinating. Growing up in an average middle-class family in Hungary's capital, however, made it kind of hard to travel such distance. We would take our family vacations to Lake Bolaton or to my grandma's on the countryside, where me and my brother would spend entire summer vacations. I never traveled outside of the country, let alone over the ocean. I had an awesome childhood, though. I loved growing up in Budapest, a vast, beautiful, and busy city that has more to offer. That has more to offer than what you'll be able to take in even during an extended vacation. Going to America always stayed just a fantasy. At the time, of course, even the simple fact that I did not speak English would have made it that much more difficult to enjoy the experience. I started learning English in fourth grade, and I hated it. <laughs> All those rules, exceptions, words, and pronunciation of them just made it incredibly difficult. But besides movies, I also liked um, music, and of course, that included American songs, too. So after the initial frustration, I actually wanted to learn English to understand the songs. Then sure enough, once it started making sense, I was hooked. I would turn on my stereo and take out my dictionary and start looking up words. And after a while, I would show up to class with ten times bigger of a vocabulary than I was supposed to know. So there I am, speaking English, and by then actually loving it, but other than that, nothing really changed. I still didn't take vacations to other countries, just lived my everyday life with my family, went to school, hung out with my friends and such. But at least I understood most of the lyrics of the songs. <laughs> <laughs> then years passed, I got my bachelor's, and actually right after, I got my first full-time job. Before that, I would work part-time here and there, mostly labor at a friend's construction company. In 2001, I got hired at this firm in telecommunications. Cell phone business was booming, so it was awesome, but of course I had to go through that ladder. Uh, three and a half years of sales, three months of business customer care, and my uh, third and last position with the company was um, the technical department. I spent a year, and a, half, a year and a half there, and by then, the dream of my childhood to go to America faded away. I, I didn't really think about it anymore. And it was at this department where I met with someone that would play a huge role in an unexpected turn of events in my life co-worker, Barbara. I saw her one day with an English book, so I asked her if she was getting ready for a test or something. I honestly expected a simple yes as an answer, but her response changed the rest of my life. She said she was going to visit family in California. I was surprised and for some reason excited at the same time. That faded idea of mine to travel to the United States crawled right back into my head and I jokingly said, well, I'm coming with you then. <laughs> now, I was joking at the time. But we talked about it later, and the innocent joke slowly started to become a plan. I was 26, making good money. I actually had the means to turn it into reality. Her aunt was a CEO of a big company in San Clemente, so when we talked to her about our plans of possibly more than just a vacation, she was more than happy to sponsor both of us. So we went to the embassy together to get our visas, and when we got them, we knew it was really happening. I told my family about my plans, and as always throughout my life, they couldn't have been more supportive. We got our plane tickets, and nine months after my innocent little joke, I quit my job, sold my car, took all my savings, said goodbye to my family, my friends, and we got on, got on to the plane to the, to the United States. I don't really remember the 15-hour trip anymore, but I do remember how I felt when I stepped out of the airport and for the first time, I breathed American air. It was amazing. I left on a Wednesday and I arrived on a Thursday, which was crazy to someone who never even changed time zones. But you better believe that I had the biggest smile on my face. Barbara's uncle picked us up and took me to a motel that we had previously booked. They dropped me off and went on their way. It was just your average motel on Lincoln Boulevard in Venice, but I couldn't have been more excited to be. 
a couple of days later, once we all settled in, her uncle took us shopping, so I got the essentials, a laptop and a camera. <laughs> Another one was still missing though, so I got online to search for a car. And it wasn't long before I settled on one that wasn't too far. So I took my very first bus ride to Culver City and drove back my first ever Dodge Intrepid. <laughs> Jet lag took me about a week to get over with, so I would stay in my room, sleep through the day, and watch sitcoms at night. My first two weeks were spent driving around and taking pictures of literally everything. <laughs> I went to every fast food restaurant that I've seen in those movies and tried each and every one of them. I would drive to Hollywood, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, Malibu, and went through multiple batteries a day for my kids. I do remember that during my first grocery shopping, I got myself some hot dogs and a case of Budweiser, and then back in my room I would turn on two and a half men, and I said to myself, smiling, Welcome to America. <laughs> After two weeks I found a room for rent, so it was time to load up my Dodge and move. The next month and a half involved more driving around and more pictures, and I also got to meet Barbara's aunt, and we took care of some paperwork too. It was during this time when I also found out that the guy who sold me the Dodge was a professional scammer and sold me the car as his own when it was the leased one. I, I didn't want any trouble, so I eventually gave it back to them. And this is where I got introduced to the court system. Since three months into being in the country, I had to sue someone. So once again, I said to myself without smiling this time, Welcome to America. I got my next car in auction, and this time everything worked out the way it was supposed to. Lesson learned. Barbara's boyfriend, who was also a friend of mine, arrived three months after we landed and we moved in together. We found a two-bed, two-bed apartment in Anaheim, and with the three of us on board, we took on some bigger trips to soak in as much as we could. We went to Vegas and a lot of more places and had a lot of fun. <laughs> then time passed, and one day, about three months later, they told me that they were going to go home. I was a bit shocked, but they made up their mind. They wished me luck and back to Hungary, if you will. I had one week to find another place for myself, so the next stop was Van Nuys. I was still excited to experience life in a new country, but somehow it was different on my own. My papers were still being processed, so I couldn't do too much uh, other than waiting. The exploring phase only lasts so long. After a while, you settle down and it becomes everyday life. Except normally, you would have your family, friends and co-workers to spend time with. But the closest to those for me were 6,000 miles away. I kept doing what I liked doing, going to the movies, the gym, and just tried to keep myself entertained. But at the end of the day, I was by myself. I had ups and downs in the following months, but the downs began taking over. By then I started seeing the end of my savings and immigration services really took their time with my papers. With money running out, however, I had to find something I was able to do with only a social security number, which all I had at the time. So I started working for fellow Hungarians I came in touch with. I would refill shells in a pet food store, working construction, cleaning windows, and taking care of messy backyards. It wasn't exactly the type of work I was used to, but I didn't mind. I was no stranger to labor. I knew I had to start my life from zero, so once again I found myself on the bottom of the ladder. When I set out on this journey, I had all these dreams of how amazing it would be to live here and really make it. Instead, there I was, not knowing anyone really. Whoever I did get to know, for the most part, just took advantage of me. So the situation couldn't have been further from what I imagined. Now I knew it was not going to be easy, but if I had known that it was going to be this hard, most likely I would have never left Hungary in the first place. Frustration and disappointment started taking place. The ultimate low came on June the 5th in 2008. It was my 27th birthday. Normally it's the anyone would look forward to, but this time was different. I didn't have my family and friends to celebrate with, so I would drink my beer by myself, trying to figure things out. Trying to see the light at the end of that tunnel, but I just couldn't. Of course I considered going back to Hungary as well, but having sold everything, leaving my job behind, would have meant starting everything all over, except I would have had to live with the thought of failing as well. So I had about four or five too many beers and I got into my car. In hindsight, of course, it was stupid and trust me, I'm not proud of it, but uh, it is part of the story. It must have been about two in the morning, I got on the empty freeway and pedaled to the mill. 
not necessarily with the thought of crashing into something, but honestly, I didn't care whether I crashed or not. I would go miles and miles with no destination and some crazy speed for about an hour. And whether it was luck or something more than that, I would never know. But amazingly, I finally stopped. I turned around, made it home safely, and I went to bed. I woke up the next morning only to realize how stupid I was. I thought about how my family would have felt if they had to find out that something could happen to me. I thought about why I came to the States in the first place. I thought about wanting to build an American dream and wanting to succeed. That night made me realize that not only I should not give up, but it refocused me in a way that wouldn't have happened without an experience. So I stuck with my shitty jobs until my papers came through, and once they finally did five months later, I got certified as a personal trainer and started my career in fitness. For the first time in the better part of a year, things started looking better. I had a job that I loved, and it paid the bills. I didn't have to deal with people taking advantage of me. And also, a friend of mine from Hungary, who found out that I lived here and won the green card lottery, he moved here too. We would rent an apartment together, which made it easier financially and more importantly, mentally too. During the next few years, I worked as a trainer and I was even able to visit Hungary a couple of times. I went through a couple of big box gyms and cities as well. First Simi Valley, then Ventura, before I settled on 24-hour fitness in Oxnard. I started working there in November of 2011 and it was then and there where I met Michelle. She was an instructor at the gym, and even though we worked at the same place, we met quite accidentally, but that's a whole different story for another time. <laughs> we started dating a couple of months later, and now we're celebrating our one-year wedding anniversary this month. Aww. While we were dating, I started my own fitness business, and I also took the citizenship test. So on April 22nd of 2015, I officially became an American citizen. Yeah. It's been 10 years since I got on that plane and began a new chapter in my life. I got to meet people that I'm not in touch with anymore, and a handful of them that I'm, I'm still thankful for. Either way, they all helped in one way or another to get myself to where I am today. Having built that American dream, and thanks to my brother, at the end of this year, I'm about to become that American uncle I never had. <laughs>